Hey folks, welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to use the key track plus modulator of Bitwig Studio to change the overtones of a bass sound. So the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, and so on, while also keeping track of the pitch of the notes. So when the notes change, also you need to change, of course, the frequencies of the EQ. So this is very easy to do in Bitwig Studio, in my opinion. I do it all the time, but you can rewatch just the video if you haven't already. So, so I got some questions about this, right? So here on YouTube, someone asked, can the key track plus modulator be used to add harmonics to the original signal, but one octave higher, such as the Waves Max bass plugin is doing? So if you have the notes in Bitwig here for the bass sound, so it's it's just the same track as in the last video, I show you this how it sounds. So we have a bass sound in here. So the question is how can we add now um, a bass or a sine partial one octave higher. And we don't need to use a key track modulator for this because we already have the notes. We already have here all the notes we need. So we can simply just put this uh, synthesizer here into an instrument layer by using Control and G. And we can add here a second synthesizer, polymer synthesizer that only plays one sine partial here. We can use the wavetable synthesizer for this or the wavetable uh, oscillator for this or just use the sine oscillator. It's also possible. We need to match, of course, here the amplitude envelope, roughly, uh, something like this. And we don't need to use filters. We can completely switch off here the filter. So with this, we just play the sine um, or the fundamental frequency here of all of these nodes. Maybe open this up here. So we basically double here uh, the fundamental or the sub uh, of the bass sound. So the question now is how can we play actually the second harmonic? And it's very easy. We just use here the second layer, I call the sign, and we can use the ratio. We can put this to two to one. And this is actually the second harmonic, this is the third harmonic and so on. So second harmonic, right, it's just this. So we can easily just add another synthesizer, polymer synthesizer, and we can play any uh, overtone um, that we want by just using here this ratio thing, right? So this is the easy answer to this because you don't need to use a key track modulator for this. Maybe later on we use it and we, oh, well, I show you how you can do this in multiple ways. So this is the, the simple way. Uh, so let's pull out here the polymer synthesizer again. Um, another question was, very effective. Do you think the strategy can also be used to replace the fundamental of a bass sound with a sine wave to get these ultra clean sub basses? And a lot of people also, you know, they want sub, uh, super clean, high precision sounds. Um, so here we can um, just replace the fundamental. Because you can see here, I'm using a detuned Rees um, or just two saw waves, slightly detuned when you get this over, this volume fluctuation and some people don't like it. I like it because it brings movement to the sound. Uh, but we can replace this here very easily inside of the polymer synthesizer. Um, and if you use the wavetable oscillator, we can use this feature called remove fundamental. So if we just check this. Right, we can completely remove the subharmonics here. Maybe a loop here on the first note from for a while. So with this we just remove the fundamental, but we can bring it back with this clean sub sine wave here by using the sub oscillator on 50% and we use here a sine uh, zero. Mm -hmm. 
So 0% is no fundamental, 50% is uh, half dry, half sub oscillator, um, and 100% is just the sub oscillator. And we can see there are some overtones here because there is some distortion here in the FX uh, chain, of course. So this is the, the simple answer. Uh, we can use the wavetable oscillator to just remove the fundamental. And we can then use here the sub oscillator to bring back in a very static, clean sub bass. That's at least how I do it. So the question now is, if you don't use the wavetable oscillator, is there something you can do? And of course, the the answer is yes, you can always do something in Bitwig about something. Um, so we can just add, um, let's say, a low cut, a very steep low cut, because we completely want to remove the sub bass. And the steepest low cut you can find inside of EQ+, Plus because here we have an 8P, 8-pole low cut, 48 dB per octave slope. It's very steep, right? And then we need to find the right frequency because we want to just cut out the first harmonic or is, is it actually the, the fundamental. So the lowest, uh, the lowest partial we want to cut out. And we do this exactly like in the last video. We use a key track modulator here because the sub is also just monophonic. It's just one note at a time. And we modulate here the shift parameter by exactly 60 semitones again. That's the magic number. And we can put this uh, the center frequency here on C3. So this is the frequency of the sub. Uh, but it's not the right frequency we need. Maybe I use also a different resolution. Because you can see here the um, frequency is where or the frequencies where, where we cut is exactly the sub frequency. That's not the right frequency. We need to go one partial higher. So we go here to C4 instead of C3. And now we cut basically at the second harmonic and everything below it is gone. So we completely cut out the fundamental. Right, it's completely gone here. Um, can we show this here? No. Okay, so we completely removed here the fundamental just with EQ. And when we change the notes, or we play different notes, you can see here it's, it moves around. So it's always at the right position for just the second harmonic. Um, also in the last video, I just completely forgot to say that um, this is also working on MPE data. So if you have your notes uh, with pitch bands, mm -hmm. something like this here, it also works. You can see here the EQ moves. So it's always in the right position for the right pitch band or for the right uh, note. Very cool, actually. Um, so now that we cut out here the fundamental, we want to add back a clean sign oscillator, of course, because we don't want to use the features of the polymer. But in my opinion, just use polymer for everything and you are good to go. But maybe you use the sampler or something like this. Uh, so you can use this trick here. So then we can add here a chain container. And because it's a bit weak, we can add multiple instruments into the chain. It's not a problem at all. So we add here another polymer synthesizer. Also use a sine oscillator here and just match maybe the ADSR a little bit, something like this. And then you receive the notes here also from, from the clip to the polymer. And then we mix in 50% the sine partial and 50% the dry signal without the fundamental. You can see here this partial or this sub bass is completely static. There's no movement at all. Yeah, you can do this uh, further if you want to. So we can cut here higher 
instead of the second partial, we use the third partial. Um, so this would be G4, I think, um, a bit higher. So we also remove here the second harmonic, right? And then we can say, okay, uh, let's bring in also here the second harmonic, this one. And we can change the loudness of this. So this is our original sine uh, or saw wave. And we add just these two partials. So if you don't like this that you have to match here the ADSR, we can try and clone the ADSR or the sound itself with just using a follower. So here, instead of polymer, we can use, uh, let's say, a, a polygrid. And here we just use a sign partial and we use, instead of an ADSR, we use a multiply. And then we use here an envelope follower, which changes the, yeah, the amplification. And we use an audio in, so we receive basically the try signal. So everything that's uh, cut it out here or left out, left out from the EQ plus. So we receive this here. So it changes now in volume um, with our original signal here. Let's go to 50%. Right, this is our uh, partial here. Okay, works nice. So here we don't need to use actually the layer. We can do this inside of the grid pretty easily. Uh, so we use here maybe a second sign. So this is the second harmonic. Uh, use a mixer. So you have all the options in the world. Um, we can just use an envelope follower to mimic the audio shape or audio waveform of the incoming signal to change the volume here of our partials or we can just use a polymer synthesizer and dial in our own um, audio envelope or amplitude envelope and it kind of works so this is also something you can do um, maybe go back here to c4 uh, um, another option is to use something like the tree monster uh, most of the times it's more experimental. So this is trying to pitch track what's going on in the audio signal. So this one doesn't receive or uses the notes coming here from the note clip. It really tries to pitch track, which makes it also usable on just audio signal. So if you have just an audio file here and you want to try and pitch track it, you can use the tree monster. So we can try and single out here the lowest partial. And then it plays just a sine wave exactly at this frequency. But here we can say just play it one octave lower. Then you mix it in with a dry signal. Uh, the speed knob changes how fast it reacts to the audio changes, so it can uh, react pretty fast. Or very slow. But it's not always working perfect. Sometimes it's very nice. Um, I tried this out on kick drums. It works on kick drums pretty nice sometimes. Um, but yeah, the big benefit is it tries to pitch track the audio signal so you don't need to use um, notes or if you don't have notes, you 
you can, can, can just try it out. Um, but it's also not always giving you a clean result. So the tree monster is an option, of course. Okay, I think that's it for this video. I want to show you basically here these kind of tricks. I know for a lot of people this is not, you know, this is nothing new, but there are also a lot of people just new to Bitwig and I don't know that there are actually some instrument layers and stuff like this. Uh, maybe I should do more some of these simple tutorials just for some newcomers or some new Bitwig users. Uh, but these are all kinds of tricks I use over the years for certain situations. And uh, you can do pretty pretty much everything in Bitwig uh, with some kind of workaround. And um, as you can see here, um, you can work on every partial. You can replace it, you can cut it out or replace it with something else. And um, yeah, play around with these kind of combinations uh, of different devices in Bitwig very easily. Um, also with the last video, by just using uh, notes from a different channel here from the uh, from the piano, for instance, here, right? I play some piano notes, so I can use these notes here and just um, control some kind of notch filter on my bass, so I can cut out these frequencies, so they make room for the piano and stuff like this. Or you use the notes from the piano and you use a bandpass filter on the bass, so you have a resonator that plays a melody on top of your bass sound. Everything is possible and um, yeah, I hope it gives you some inspirations to try this out and if you have questions, of course, let me know in the comments down below and make some videos about it, right? That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and uh, leave a subscription, leave a like and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Where's the base? <laughs> See you guys.